they get to stand up a little break <laughs> at the start of a meeting, kind of unusual. <laughs> okay. I pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag of the United States, States of America and to and the Republic, Republic which, which, which it stands, stands under, under God, God indivisible, 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 with liberty and justice, and justice for all. Okay, well done. Okay, so if we go to the agenda that Trish was nice enough to send to all of us, I have it here. The first item is always um, approval of the prior meeting minutes. All in favor? Excuse me. I see some hands in the air. Aye. Okay, so good. I think it's unanimous then. Thank you. And then for tonight's agenda, folks, it looks pretty light in regards to residents. We have four to remove, but the majority of them seem to be um, grading permits related to dirt and trees that are less than six removed. Um, there's one at the end where we'll have to learn the tree size to see if there's any heritage trees involved, but otherwise it looks fairly light. So I think we can go through each one. Um, but we'll need less detail considering it's really just the, the movement of dirt. So do we have anybody here from 29 Ivy Lane? Uh, Dave Fiorello from Omni. Can you hear me? Yep. Yes. Yes, hi Dave. Yeah, so great. Um, good, good. So we understand you're here because um, of the 950 cubic yards of dirt and you're removing eight trees, which is above the six. So if you can yeah. just uh, walk us through that plan. And Ian, if you can pull up the drawing. Great, thanks Ian. So Dave, if you can just direct us as to which um, you want Ian to pull up? Yes, um, we should have. I mean, this is this is a plan of the landscaping prepared to show you what the trees are. Um, there is a separate plan, our grading permit plans, that show which trees are being removed. I think it may be clearer to see than this plan. Okay. I don't know. It's a, um, if you it's have a separate that, plan. It's not a, this sheet. Okay. It's a sep it was the original grading permit plans. If you don't have them, I can share my screen if that helps. Trish, did you send those over to me? I just have this one sheet. Okay. So I can, so I can Ian, switch but is it okay here. if Dave? Yeah, one second. Ian, is it okay if Dave just shares mm -hmm. his screen? That might be faster. So if the consultants just know that whatever you send us is what we post. So if we don't have well, everything, we put it up. So. Maybe Dave, if you can just share your screen, and then afterwards, if yes, you can I send can. it to Trish, we'll make it part of the, we'll have it as part of the official package. And Let's if you can make I that can. a little larger. <laughs> um, can you see what I have shown here on the plan? Yep. Yes. Okay. Uh, I will go to the first sheet. The first sheet of the plan set that we had submitted. This was part of a grading permit plan that we had submitted. This lot is part of our Drossen. It is at the end of the cul-de-sac and it is lot uh, 213, I believe it is. Um, right now, it's a vacant lot and there are a number of trees along the, I guess the southwestern edge of the property and I have shown here. We have shown on this plan one, two, three, four, five, six uh, individual trees. And then there is a second or another tree over here that's a twin. So we're counting that as eight trees. So we have a list on the plan of what trees they are. And we have them shown along this edge here as being removed. And so Dave, can you enlarge, is it that lower right-hand corner where you have the details about the tree size and type in the lower right? Yes, can I you do. make I that bigger? That that Perfect. Helps. Yep, that's helpful. Uh, 
the six inch and the nine inch apple trees is a is a twin tree, so we're counting that as two trees. The others are apples, uh, a mulberry, a locust, and a hemlock. And then do you have a plan that shows where these 16 trees would go? Yes, we do. And that was the plan that was shown origi originally. So again, I'm sharing my screen, which is the same screen that uh, was originally posted. We're showing the replacement trees along the southern, I guess, the southwest boundary and along the eastern boundary of the property line. Okay. And do you have a table that tells us um, specifically what trees you're putting in? Yes. Oh, and perfect. If, um, if you can read that. You love this? Like, are you just like... Oh, yeah. This is like you just yeah. feel like, oh my God, like my Hey, David, can you put us on mute? Yes, absolutely. Can you put yourself on mute? Sorry, <laughs> that's yes, what I meant yes. to say. I'm trying to figure out. Uh, oh, I think it was the other David. It's um, emerging? Yes. Yes, that's what I'm trying to do. Oh, okay. Am I on mute? No. No. We or can not. hear you. <laughs> now you are. Good job. Um, okay, so folks, any comments about the tree species listed in regards to, you know, our recommended tree list and, yeah. and what works in this area? Yeah, Dave, um, if you mind, can you scratch the sugar maple? They are not performing well here. Um, yeah. You can either change it for red maple or one of the Quercus species, one of the oak species, um, something a little bit more sustainable for this area, the sugar maple. Even the Green Mountain, which is supposedly zoned and hardy for this area, is not doing well. Yeah, and I thought the Norway so, spruce right. was invasive. It is, that's, that's Norway maple, Eileen. But, oh, thank you. Well, while we're on that subject, John, I, maybe, it, I thought maybe David, you could if you could mix a few cryptomerias in there with those Norway spruces, it might be an idea. Uh, just because you got eight Norways, uh, you know, even Yoshino might be a nice tree uh, to mix in there on, in that category A, if you're of a mind to. Um, the other, the only other thing I have to note is that there's a 36-inch beech shown on the plan uh, down in the. It looks like it's going to be left of the of the new construction. Yes, and I think you're making reference to what I have marked cursor on yep. in this corner here. Correct, mm -hmm. correct, David, that's right. And so number one is uh, don't wait too late for the shade tree fencing around that beach. Mm -hmm. Number two is uh, you might just want to j jot down a note, make sure it doesn't have the bleeding disease because a lot of yep. beaches do. I'm sorry, could you repeat that? Make sure it's just uh, write yourself a note and make sure that that beach doesn't have bleeding disease. Yeah, it's, it's a canker. And I, I actually inspected this tree. Oh, great. Um, the, tree, the tree is actually in good shape. And the tree protection fence really doesn't do justice. Um, actually, that tree is going to be fine. I mean, there's not going to be any disturbance, even though that line is actually inside the drip line. Yeah. It doesn't, it's a very tight pattern tree doesn't have a very broad, broad canopy like you would see on most of the beech trees, but it doesn't have any uh, bleeding canker. Um, it's actually in pretty decent shape. Okay, that's great, John. Great. Any other May comments? I summarize? About unless, you're done, unless you have more. Any other comments about the trees that you have listed? Uh, I'm sorry, any other comments to the uh, committee about the trees that are listed? I would just like to uh, confirm, uh, again, I, I will pass this information on to the landscape designer, but my understanding is that um, the green mountain sugar maple is not a desired, and you would rather have that substituted with perhaps an oak or another type of uh, um, maple. John, is that correct? That is correct, Dave. 
and uh, a suggestion was a cryptomera mixed with the spruce. Yeah. Maybe do three and five, th three and five, or, you know, I, I don't know how the, the design is going to look or what the antenna design, obviously it's for screening, but maybe you just do yes. some, uh, some odd numbers there, which always looks better when you're massing evergreens. I will pass that information on. So we can revise this plan and send it back for approval. So we could do that administratively, Dave, so you don't have to go back to Shade Tree. We'll just verify that you did that. That works for me, Steve. We lost Eileen. I think I saw her make a, a phone motion that maybe she had a phone call. Matt, were you over there? Does everything look good with the uh, the the um, tree protection? Whatever else needs to be done. You're on mute, mute, Matt. Yeah, everything looked good, James. Okay, so if Eileen's lost, should we just uh, make a motion to approve? Yeah. Uh, make a motion to approve? Yep, sounds good. I move to approve. Second. All, All in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks, Dave. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. Good night. So next up is Morris Road, right? 476 Morris, 478 Morris. 376? Seven, 376, seven, sorry, dyslexia. And that and that's Chris Young. Yeah, and uh, he's also 378. So I guess we're gonna do them pretty much together, correct, Chris? Yeah, basically it's one one lot that's being divided into two into two lots. Okay, if I could share my screen, I can uh, go through it with you. Great. Yep. Can you see it now? Yep. Uh, indeed. Okay, so this is indeed. the existing conditions plan. There's actually two lots there now, um, but they, they didn't build two houses. They built one, and then there's a detached garage, and so all of that's shown to be removed. Uh, 376 is on the left-hand side here, and 378 is on the right. 378 has uh, two trees to be removed. There's a 12 inch maple in the back and there is a 12 inch sycamore in the front and 376 has one eight inch sycamore in the front to be removed. So uh, one tree on 376, two on 378 and we do have the charts over here on the side. I don't believe we need any replacement because we're less than and five, but that's on sheet one. Um, sheet two shows the proposed development and sheet four is the ENS plan that shows the tree protection fencing uh, for this six inch tree in the back and a, uh, a 12 inch sycamore in the front, kind of almost right on that property line. <laughs> Chris, uh, are they sycamores or cherries? Um, um, I always like to drive down that street during the spring because the cherries just line both sides of the street. So I thought that this is from the survey, it says CY, and I thought that was going to be a sycamore, but I can find the survey plan. And yeah, it's, it's, it it's not critical or anything. It's just, I don't know. One of my favorite streets in Wayne. Hey, John, I have a I'm question. On, I'm, on, I'm on Google Earth right now. They're, they're large canopies, so they got to be sycamore. So, so those those trees are not on the street, right? No, they're street. They're street streetscape trees for sure. Because John, that's the road. We remember about a year ago. We had this. We met with the yeah. neighbors, 
Absolutely. Those were all cherries. So Matt, right now we're in the design phase of a streetscape project for that street, which would include new curb, new sidewalk, new aprons, and the removal and replacement of all the trees on the street. And we'll be meeting with the commissioner to show him the, the latest plans. And then uh, Commissioner Abel has intentions to hold a town hall meeting on the project. Right, right. But my point is that I was over there today and the, there's, the sycamores are on the next street. The, those, these trees are cherries. They're, they're cherries that go up into the wires and Yep. So I'm on. I'm on it now. These, these are the flowering cherry trees. I moved the cursor down. I'm trying to pick up. So the one right in the center there is a cherry tree, but it's large. Right. Arborist. But but my my point is like why are are we? Is some, can someone take remove one of those street trees for this project? He's not removing it. Well, one has an X through it, John. Like. One of those trees has is looks like it has an X mark through it. Right, that that's this one on 378 in the driveway, and and you're right. According to the survey plan, CY is cherry. I'm I'm sorry, I. It's probably cherry Yoshino. Yoshino. Yeah. So I mean, I I I guess my point is, these trees are going to be replaced anyway, right, Steve? I mean, yeah, there's there's bond money for this project, Matt. I mean, it, it, we haven't gone to bid, but yeah, the, the intention uh, is to go to the board relatively soon to get permission to go to bid, receive the bids, go back for approval. So, I mean, if all goes well, yes, that, that is what will occur. So, so, Steve, would it make sense for him, if he's removing one, to go back in with the pallet that we have chosen, which is the cherry trees? If he's going to plant... Well, he's not going to replace that there because that's his driveway. So no, but I'm saying replacement. He could, but for him to replace trees in the street, he's going to have to remove that sycamore. Because Chris, could you please zoom out a sec a little yes. bit? Because all his street frontage is there's driveway sycamore or driveway there's an area in between and then driveway so the only thing really thing he has room for is you know he can maybe slide one on the sides or maybe one in the middle there but john we're going to be removing and replacing all the curb and sidewalk i don't know yeah. what that's going to do to that a newly planted tree yeah you're right so my, my thought would be uh he just does what he has to do and our and we'll, we'll, continue, we'll continue with our plan, yeah. yeah. I have a question about the streetscape plan. Why, I mean, Morris is known for those cherry trees. I, I guess, Steve, you might know this, how many years they were put in. So why, why specifically this street being chosen for a new curbs and sidewalks and things? So all those cherry trees are in, in decline. Uh, when we went out there with Mr. Hosback, what I thought was a healthy tree, he said, come over here and there's a big cavern. Mm -hmm. So uh, there was actually two or three town hall meetings on the project. We met at the site. We met a couple of times at the township building. And mm -hmm. then the board of commissioners funded the project uh, through the, the uh, general obligation bond. So that's- because because they were exist, it was an existing treescape project. Is that why it got? I think part of it was to show what we can do. That yeah, they're beautiful okay. trees, and everybody said the same thing as Frank. You love to drive down that street in the spring because of the cherry trees. But you know, after meeting with John and the commissioner and the previous manager out there, a lot of those cherry trees are in terrible shape, pushing up sidewalks. Uh, they're in the power lines. So John actually presented a palette of flowering trees. Uh, so it wasn't going to be a monoculture and they would still all be flowering and, and there was input from the residents as to what kind they want. Different trees on different sides of the street because of the wires. So when the project goes through, if it goes through, you'll have a nice new curbing, sidewalk, driveway aprons, and two rows of newly planted trees warranted for a year of the specific type and variety 
uh, that the arborist put forth. And we will be bringing that plan to Shade Tree too. I just, it's not complete. So I'll be showing it to the commissioner and the manager probably next week or the week after. Uh, there's a town hall meeting. So somewhere in that time frame, uh, whenever the September meeting is, we will present that uh, plan to you folks. And is it just for Morris or will it go around to Clover? So it's Morris. And I don't know if you remember on Clover Lane, there were two trees that heaved the sidewalk really badly. Mm -hmm. So the township removed those trees because there's a real safety issue. So on that one property on the corner that had those two trees in the bad sidewalk, uh, mm -hmm. the trees will continue through, not the curb and sidewalk and everything, but the trees will continue through. Right. It's going to be a great project. Thank you. And Steve, are these, um, are the residents required to, uh, I know this is off subject, but um, redo their walkways? No, that's all part of the project, James. Okay. Sidewalk, driveway, aprons, curbs, and trees. Yeah. And, yeah. Gotcha. and folks, apologies that I had to uh, step out there. Is this in the township's right of way? Is yes. that why? Okay. The trees are, and, and, and as is the, the project is in the right of way. I, I don't have the reasons for why this specific street was chosen, um, but it was, and it was funded by the board. But I think it's more of like an example of, of what a street straight street scape project can be. Chris is wondering what we're doing here. <laughs> yeah, you're probably right, James. <laughs> So regardless, this plan Why will come this? before this commission. Yeah. We will bring the plan before the Shade Tree Commission. Okay. And so what is the decision that's being requested now? Great. What we have is so just this is a, it's a grading permit plan for both 376 Mars and 378. 376 has one tree to be removed and 378 has two to be removed. And I think that we got uh, one of the trees to be removed is in the right of way. And so then a, a discussion started about the future streetscape project that would be removing those trees uh, anyway in the right of way. Uh, I see, thank you. Okay, then are there any questions um, on this project from the council for, from, for, for the residence project, not the uh, township project that we will see later. Yeah. Just in regards to the dirt and the one tree being removed. Okay, if not, motion to approve. Motion to Aye. approve. Aye. 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 Okay, great. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Good night. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so. That brings us to the last one, which is 415 Maplewood. Do we have anyone here from that property? That's Mr. Samergian. David, if you could come online, please. Yeah, if you wanna take yourself off mute. And this is one where I think, um, Again, it's a grading permit, four trees to be removed, and it would just be good to know are any, that falls less than our six, so are any of them heritage trees? So uh, that would Madam be a Chair, key question. I, I do wanna note that this is a land development project for uh, townhome carriage homes. So this was before you previously from a land development standpoint. The reason I asked Mr. Samergian to come back is when you get your grading permit, there's much more specificity to the plan. Uh, the, the land development plans, not that they're inaccurate, but they're not as specific as grading permit plans. So that's why I asked Mr. Samergian to return uh, before this commission. Hello, David. I don't know if we lost him. I'm like showing on the screen, but yeah. he's, he's um, on mute. Maybe, Ian, if you want to pull up the drawing while we're waiting for David to come online. 
when I went by today, the four trees that are listed as uh, being, as being removed, were, from what I could tell, were removed. Um, but I can assure you they weren't heritage trees. Okay. They, were, they, were, they weren't valuable trees. Okay. And again, this was before you through land development. Okay, this that's is good. more of a formality. And this yeah. is basically and an industrial something... parking lot right now. So this looks like it's going to be quite an improvement to the area. Okay. Definitely, Frank. Okay, good. Then I guess we don't even have to worry about egress patterns. No, there's two ways into it's this. It's already an industrial well, parking yeah. lot. One off Highland and one off Maplewood. And like I say, for, from the general standpoint, this commission already approved the project. He approved what you see before you now. It was because of the grading permit that he had to come in. Yep. Yeah. So even though Mr. Samurjian okay, is and, unable and normally, to join us, um, is there another sheet there in? Because perhaps the board could vote on it. I, yeah, I'm sure we can. Yeah, it's toward the bottom. It's like sheet seven. There we go. So this was the landscape plan that was approved by the Shade Tree Commission on Land Development. Right. Okay, and if it's an industrial parking lot now, then there shouldn't be any concern about egress patterns or protecting existing trees. No, it's Am not, I correct? as Nicola said, it's not the most attractive site right now. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so any questions on this from anyone? I had a question for David, but I'll ask you, Steve. Um, in, if, in our ordinances, there's all these, there's references to berms and, and references to buffers planted on top of berms. And I know in, in either the shade tree meeting, previous shade tree meeting on this project or planning, I remember there was concern over the, red, there were some residents who were concerned about berms. And I, frankly, my, my feeling on berms is they're not the most attractive thing to do. And I would prefer if this, so I, I, it, I don't know if, I don't know if David intends to. I'm unmuted. Oh, hi, David. I'm here. I'm sorry. It's okay, David. They, they denied your project. We're all good. <laughs> <laughs> David, so I have to apologize because I actually uh, took uh, my first two days off in the last eight months, mm -hmm. and it happens to be one of them tonight. So we'll, I'll try to answer all the questions that, that you have and uh, you know, see what we can, see what we can uh, finalize. Okay, David, yeah. I think we're almost, yeah, I think we're almost there. I think we're David, almost David, done. This is Matt Goles. Um, I'm on planning as well as Shakespeare, so I, I've been in, you've been in front of us a couple times, a few times. Yeah. Um, I, I just have a question for you that, can, and this question emanates from, in our code, we have references to berms and buffers. Okay. And I know, I know at one of the meetings, previous meetings, uh, berms were suggested. I personally don't like berms. I think berms are outdated. Um, so my question to you is, are you, were you planning on berming or were you just planning on using buffer planning? Well, uh, I'm, I'm also not a fan of berms. Um, you know, I'll, I'll start by saying that some of some suggestions and some things that are in plan and are approved and are gonna be implemented um, are with this project are through the process of, you know, the, the committees making suggestions. So we have been all along trying to accommodate and appease all, all those requests uh, because we feel that at the end of the day, this project is going to be a tremendous uh, asset and a, and a huge improvement to what is currently on site. Um, so, you know, in this plan, there's what, a hundred and some trees 
uh, various species and sizes that are not on the site. It's a pretty, uh, you know, it's a, it's a pretty um, messy situation there now. So to answer your question in short form, I'm not a fan of berms either. Um, I'm more of a fan of buffers. A lot of the trees that are in plan that are based on um, township requirements and, uh, and, and sort of a, a landscape plan are sized at six to eight feet, eight to 10 feet. I don't think there's really anything huge um, as planted. You know, we, we, need to, um, we need to hopefully be able to uh, increase some of these sizes of trees without having to go back to shade tree and, and make those requests. And I would imagine that that wouldn't be an issue. Um, but at the end of the day, we're, you know, we're open to whatever the, you know, committee um, is looking for as far as specifics. I know that we've done this exercise with different varieties and requests that have been made for um, certain species that have uh, historically not done well um, in, in these locations. So I'm open to uh, buttoning up whatever, you know, the committee is, is, uh, has open uh, questions, concerns, comments, and, um, you know, getting this project started. Because we are, we are at the point now where we're waiting on utilities to be, uh, electric utilities to be removed, which are happening uh, tomorrow. And we will be in the township on Friday requesting our demo permits to begin um, this project. We've already set up silt fencing and, um, and, and you know, our, our sort of uh, fencing and, 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 you know, tree fencing and stuff that, that, that's shown on the plan. We're ready to, to go. So I'll, le I'll leave it at that and, uh, you know, look for, for comments. I think it looks good like it did before. I agree with you, Matt, about the berms. We, I just looked at a job a couple of days ago. It looks like two elephants coming out of the ground as our designer uh, called it. But um, yeah, I don't know if that's part of this conversation, but I do agree with you about berms. And if that is a township requirement, maybe looking to change that. It is outdated. It, it's 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 very loosely written so that it, there's there's like four it, there's options and so berming is one option but I can assure you talking to former shade tree commissioners that the berming is is out in in terms of how we should be doing business and um, so anyway David I'm just saying don't do berms it's fine with me I don't want to speak for the other members of the shade tree commission but. If you look at our ordinance, I think it's loose enough that if you have buffer screening, that, that would suffice. I'm, I'm, I'm in agreement, Matt. Good. Is there, is there a fence um, along the trail already in place or is that gonna be replaced? Sorry, uh, please repeat. I, I didn't catch that whole question. Along the trail, when the property along the trail, is that fence already in place or is it going to yes. be replaced so uh there's a portion uh, from from what i can see there's a portion of the fencing that's already in place and um as you travel uh let's say north um uh on the property along the trail the grades drop substantially on the trail so there's a uh, large boulder walls and at some point when the trail, I guess, was built, the, the fence only went so far. We, we of course, would like to uh, continue the fencing that is already in place, which is of like species and, and kind that's already along the entire trail and take it as far as we can along this property line um, to, you know, you know, continue that, that, that look. But we haven't we haven't approached the township uh, with a fence permit for that yet. But that's our intention. Okay. 
so any other questions um, related specifically to the cubic yards of dirt, which is the trigger for them to be here, the grading permit, I should say. Okay, motion to approve. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, Aye. great. Hey, thanks a lot, David. Um, enjoy the rest of your vacation day. Thank you. Thank you, David. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah. Okay, bye-bye. Okay, um, so per the agenda, that looks like that brings us to the last one, but I noticed, Trish, you have another link uh, posted. It's another what? Uh, link in the agenda, let's see. So, so we have 107 Lantoga. That's a yeah, you had 501 Shade Land. Okay, we took that off and we okay. we submitted a new um, agenda. Okay. Was, I think yesterday. Oh, that was from the old one. Okay, mm -hmm. no problem. So okay, great. Seven Lantoga, uh, Colin Whelan is here. He was before the Shade Tree Commission for a one lot uh, construction project, uh, demolition and, in, and construction of a new home. He was approved. Uh, for what his plan showed, but four additional trees were removed without a permit and not as part of your original approval. So Mr. Whelan is back before you to discuss the trees that were removed and for the shade tree to provide some type of remedy. Okay, great. Welcome, Colin. If thank you can you. just, yeah, thank you. If you can just tell us about the trees that were removed, in particular, we're interested in the size and is there a drawing that we should be referring to? So the only drawing I can reference is um, the original site survey that was part of the grading permit submission set. Okay. Colin, we also, I got your email. So Ian oh. also has the, um, the plans that you submitted to, to me at 530. So there was a, so that was just a series of pictures. Um, there's showing four existing to remain trees on the survey performed back in 2018. I acquired the property in January 2020. And at the time of site clearing, of the four that were existing to remain, only two were on site. And that's what's shown in the pictures that I cloud it, that I sent to Trish. Okay. I don't know if they were able to get submitted or not. They were late submission, but. No, he has them. Oh yeah. so. It's the tall, what I think is a cedar that looks, you know, in bad shape. That was what I think per the plan is a, uh, sorry. The plan calls it a 14 dash nine inch cedar. But in theory, it wasn't a twin. It was just the 14 inch that you see in the picture. So I have a, a feeling that additional trees were removed by the time the survey was done in 2018 and the, when I acquired the site and then submitted for clearing permit. And, and unfortunately, I did not do a newer survey to show that these trees were then removed. So I don't know when they were removed and, and who removed them, but I think they were removed between the years 2018 and January of 20. So you can see in the cloud it, image you, you have the 14 inch and then below it, you see a smaller tree, which I believe is the six inch cedar uh, directly in front of it that's shown on the survey. You mean the nine inch, correct? Um, well, the, the nine inch yeah. twin, when we took that, when we, when we, the 14 inch that was removed, the twin had a, a, a stub on it that had already been removed. Got it. And then the six inch cedar is shown in front of the dilapidated cedar, uh, kind of like behind the chimney. Mr. Whelan, I, I have to ask you a question because we had gotten a call about the additional trees being removed, you know, during the construction period. Uh -huh. so I'm, I'm not disputing what you say, but that kind of conflicts, it conflicts with what you're putting forth. So our call was that more trees were removed on site than uh, were shown on the plan. Our inspector confirmed that. 
So I, I don't know, I, I, I'm confused. And you may be correct, I'm not saying you're being disingenuous in any way, but that's, that's how it came to us. Yeah, and, 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 and maybe I'm mistaken, but you know, when we finished the clearing, all I could see were the, the two stumps directly behind the existing structure. Could you pull up your site plan so we could actually look at, you know, what showed what sure. was there to be removed and what was removed? That might help the committee. Um, yeah, how do I share? Uh, and while he's reviewing that, you that know, help? That, did that, did that show? Yes. So let me go. So there, directly behind the uh, structure to be removed, shaded in red, are the the trees in question. I have the clear. I have the clearing permit that what that was reviewed back in June. If you want me to send that to Ian, that would be good. Thank you, Trish. Obi Wan. Okay, so Colin, you're saying the it's one, the three the trees? Six, uh, sorry, the one six inch cedar that's shown in the very rear is on, you know, shows it on the property line, but there's there's an existing fence there that the neighbor to the south has put up. And if, if that tree was removed, I would think the fence would have to be affected. Because Believe it or not, the, the guy's fence encroaches my property, but you know, I'm not hampering about it because it's only a matter of an inch. But, but again, I mean, I, so, I don't. So we, either, either way we're looking at this, you know, that is a typical habit of a cedar to look sparse, especially when they're mature. Uh -huh. you know, we, have a, we have a calculation of four required trees now. Um, they're all for the one, so, you know, my opinion is we need to plant four shade trees and be done with it. I think that's wise instead of going through a lot of machinations here. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll do whatever the, the board and committee wants, you know, to satisfy your request. Yep. I mean, it's a, the, the existing maple in the very rear um, has to be larger than what the survey says because it, it dominates the rear of the yard. So I think if anything, you know, proper placement of these four additional trees, you know, and I'll, I'll look at whoever wants to visit, you know, where we want to put them, but I think so, we, you know, we, we would like to have at least two oaks, two of those trees to be oak species. Okay. Whether it be swamp white oak, willow oak, um, chinapin oak, laurel oak, valley oak, I'm fine with any of those. And then two additional hardwoods, um, either being of black gum, maple species, London plain, something with a broad canopy. So if I can make a recommendation to the committee, um, if you're okay with the applicant uh, planting the four trees, I would request that the applicant provide a revised plan based on a meeting with the arborist on site. And then uh, that plan will be submitted to the township as a revised grading permit plan, just so our inspector knows that there's trees to be, additional trees to be planted. If that works for the Shade Tree Commission, just a suggestion. From my works viewpoint, yeah, that definitely works. Um, and I'm good just if it's a one for one tree replacement, I'm good with the four trees. Um, I appreciate John's recommendation. If, if there's something else, I think that's okay too. Yeah, I agree with John and his recommendations. Yeah. First time, James. Yeah, well, there's always a first. Very. Okay. So, Colin, are you okay with I think uh, so. Okay. That, that's pretty easy. Um, any other questions from the committee? So, would, uh, questions for me or from the committee? You can ask as well. Um, Steve, the plan submission would be submitted um, to Patricia. So yes. yeah, so you, you'll meet in the field with John. You'll determine a, a pro appropriate locations and species. 
reflect that on a plan and then submit the required whatever it is five plans to trish yep. they'll be stamped and that's what's going to be given to our inspector so when that time comes they can verify that you're you're planting the right things in the right spot okay and colin maybe um to preempt our meeting maybe a good idea for you to walk the site figure out some areas obviously we want it to benefit your project um, but having the four trees on site. So maybe if you have some areas prior to us meeting that you want to, you know, hammer home when we, uh, when we meet, that would be great so that we uh, can be very productive during that time. So I can, I can, I can paint out the proposed trees. Um, Correct. And per then we the, the approved per the approved plan. And then we can pick, you know, kind of the next four. That's correct. Okay, I'll mark the existing or the new six that are shown on uh, three or four plan, and then uh, I'll. That's great. That's a great idea. And uh, Trish can provide you my cell. Well, you want to take my cell phone number down right now, real quick, so you have it. Sure. So we don't waste time. Six one zero. Yep. Seven three one. Got it. Seven nine six nine. Um, and I will be in Radnor tomorrow afternoon. If you want to make time tomorrow, if not, I'll be in there on Monday. Okay, I will reach out and uh, schedule a time with you, John. Great, thank you. Okay, good. With all that being said, motion to approve? All in aye. favor? Aye. aye. Okay, great. Thanks, Colin. Thanks, right, thanks Colin. Guys. Thanks, John. Thank you. Okay, you too. Okay, super. Okay, so then let's go down to, I think Steve has an item he wanted to talk about that we said we would table under new business. Uh, the South Wayne Municipal Parking Lot. Yes, thank you. That's been on the agenda for a while. We'd love to discuss that and get your input. So Ian, if you could please pull that up. I'm not sure I have that one. That's the uh, South Wayne Municipal Parking Lot. I'm sending it to you because it was okay. from last. It was from the last meeting. Just give me, give me one minute. Thank you both. Steve, did they start the meter bridge? They did. They're uh, there now. Doing I'm stop that. That's a, that's a cool project. Piles will be driven uh, on Monday. Really? That's a big time firm that Haynes and Kibble House. That they are. Steve, you look like Mr. Wilson on home improvement. All you could see was from your nose up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to look at the plans on my phone and it, I sent them to Ian. Okay, so maybe while we're waiting, uh, Matt or James, you can give us some education on berm versus buffer and why uh, berms are no longer in, what the rationale is there and why buffers are. Well, it, uh, if you, you can see berms, I mean, around town, Maplewood, where Atley Road goes into Maplewood, there, that's bermed and with buffer on top of the berm, it basically cuts the view shed. It's, it's, it's uh, you're, you know, you're waiting for a Russian tank, basically. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's so I think it was a it was a way to to stop headlight glare. Oh. It was there were also there are engineering reasons for it. But in this case, especially in this case, I think this Maplewood development, it makes no sense if you have if you have they have uh, nice species of evergreen trees and shade trees and those trees will do the job that they'll do the same job that Burma do without blocking, you know, without it being totally blocked. And in terms of tree physiology, the, the, yeah. the actual soil strength um, compared to being on, you know, native ground plane is reduced by like 40%. So when we have these high intense sustained winds, 
most trees you see fail first are trees that are planted on man-made conditions, i.e. a berm. Mm -hmm. um, and the biggest factor why I hate berms is because when we get into drought scenarios, so those trees are above standard grade. Um, any supplemental irrigation runs off immediately onto the native ground plane and all that moisture is gone and is not absorbed by the plant. So those trees tend to struggle. So if you're ever driving around during July and mid-August, this is not a good factor now because we got all that rain, but take a look at a berm at like a shopping center and then look at the trees that are on native ground plane and you'll see a big difference in tree color and tree health. Oh, that's very helpful. Thank you. Okay. Steve, now to you. I, I'm, I'm going to assume that everybody's familiar with the South Wayne Municipal Parking Lot across from the Radnor School Board, uh, Radnor Township Administration, School Administration Building. Yep. So this is really a, a stormwater management project. It's a flood reduction project. So Closer up North Wayne, you know that it, it floods regularly in front of the firehouse. So a portion of this project is to try to get that runoff into the existing system at the middle school, uh, which is underutilized. Second portion of this project is to use this property that the township owns, the South Wayne Municipal Lot, as a stormwater management facility. And that's really gonna be taking a lot of the runoff that comes down Runnymede and from South Wayne if you look in, in big floods, we flood from Runnymede too. A lot of people aren't aware of that. So basically you're looking at the outline of our parking lot. That outline will go away because what's gonna happen, virtually every square foot of that parking lot will be excavated. There'll be large uh, concrete structures placed underground for storage and release and ground and uh, of stormwater. So the benefit that people will see, they won't see that, they'll see a reduction in flood, but the benefit is we have a new parking lot. And if you could pop up the next page. So what we did was we looked at the access and egress. And right now there's a lot of ways to get in and out of there. It's not really the most safe. So, uh, we work with the consultants to design a parking lot that has proper flow and is easier to exit and entrance. And we'll have nice, uh, could you blow that up just a tad Ian? And we'll have nice uh, green space, which there is none other than the, the war memorial, which will be untouched during this process. So we had two plans, we had a plan where our consultant suggested some trees, but I asked him to remove that and show this blank palette to the Shade Tree Commission to get your input on quantity and types of trees. So basically, other than where there's a pole or uh, in the parking in the green, the green is your canvas, so to speak. So. We have suggestions, but I, I didn't really think that was necessary. I thought, uh, you know, this group is talented enough to come up with a great plan. You don't have to do it tonight. You can mull it over, but again, Ian, if you could just click it up two times. Uh, I'm sorry, make it bigger twice, so three times now. One more, my friend, perfect. So, if you look at this, now you can see where it says like pole light fixture mounted. Um, so we don't wanna do that where the poles are and they're those little dots, but you can plant anywhere else, you know, basically around them. Uh, each island by our ordinance should have a tree. In the upper right corner, you have a little green area that you could get a little creative with, with trees, shrubbery, whatever you want. Uh, just south of that, towards the bottom of the page, you see we have even more room. So one of the things I really stri strive to do on this, aside from uh, circulation for parking, I wanted to try to get green in here because right now it's just a wasteland. Mm -hmm. and, and we were, this is about as much green as we can get uh, and to, to keep a good amount of parking spaces. So the main thing is 
was to get an idea of what the Shade Tree Commission would like to see. And if, if that's too much for tonight, that's fine. But I would ask that we come back with ideas in September, very specific that we can note and we will put on the plan. So if you wanna consider this an introductory uh, view, that's fine. Uh, if you wanna get into specifics, that's great too. And what I'll do is just mark up the plan uh, to show what you have. Steve, what's the timing of this project? When did you want to start? I wanted to start about a year ago, uh, but <laughs> we, we ran into some snafus. Uh, we've been nine months working with PICO for utility relocation. Uh, somewhere in that timeline, we had a, a long, a lengthy permit process with PennDOT and uh, funding funding for the project. So the design of this project was approved. Uh, the next step will be to go before the Board of Commissioners. I'm, I'm hopeful that we're gonna go to the commissioners in October to request authorization to see, receive sealed bids. Um, and that doesn't cost anything, but it's also letting the commissioners know this is the cost of the project. So if it's awarded this, you know, this is what you'd have to fund. It's a $3 million project, so it's, it's not, it's not small. Yeah. yeah. Steve, can I just, can I just add, so I don't know if um, anyone watched our meeting, la the commissioner meeting last Monday, last Monday, um, we started the process of uh, investigating a bond for um, stormwater projects. And quite frankly, this one, um, you know, I've been aware of this one since I first got on the board. We certainly know the flooding that happens over there. It not only impacts the school district buildings um, and the homes and the church and you know a whole area over there. It is um, a hindrance for the fire department when they need to get out and get where they need to be. So, to me, this is definitely one of the priority stormwater projects. Um, and my hope is that you know we will continue to move forward as a board with the bonds. Um, you know, looking at a bond for stormwater projects. Seeing how much we can fund, we certainly, uh, Steve presented us a list uh, at the meeting. There's, was it Steve, $15 million, I think, of projects, just projects that have been engineered at this point? Yes, ma'am. Um, you know, and it certainly is a, a, a heavy lift on that, but I think, you know, as a board, we need to start looking, prioritizing. We've asked the, uh, the staff to help us do that, prioritize these projects so that we can identify. Um, you know, where we're going to get the most bang for our buck and I think, uh, you know, help residents and areas that are so significantly impacted by, by uh, you know, the need for stormwater management. So what, what the Shade Tree Commission gets to do is uh, you get the ice cream on top of the cone, right? So we create a big hole in the ground, a lot of excavation, and in the end, when everything's all paved over and the curbing's in and the grass is in, so you get to have the final view of this. So Steve, it doesn't sound like though from your timeline that you wanna plant this fall, is this is for spring planting, uh, is that, that right? Yeah, that would probably be a best case scenario. Okay. But for bidding purposes, we need to know what we're bidding. So we right. need to know the understood. Yeah. Do you I, I have a couple questions. Um, Steve, first of all, um, it's super exciting. That's not a question because this is so overdue and this area of flooding, um, this is my neighborhood. So it is absolutely will be a big impact for the improvement of our town. Um, but I have a question about, um, first of all, the spaces. Did we lose a lot of spaces from what's there? Um, it's been a long time, but I think we lost four or five. Oh, and this okay. was vetted through the uh, police department staff traffic committee. So I worked mm -hmm. with those folks, uh, mm -hmm. as well as the parking authority to get everybody's input. And the, okay. the general consensus was to get appropriate circulation, better pedestrian safety, and a little more green, it was worth it to lose those spaces. Uh, this lot is underutilized for the most mm -hmm. part. So mm -hmm. we're trying, hopefully once this is done, 
Uh, I always tell the restaurateurs in North Wayne, you know, when, when you go to Philadelphia, people park at a garage and they'll walk 10 blocks to dinner. Mm -hmm. Right. They're stacked on North Wayne Avenue trying to get a spot right in front of the restaurant. But this thing's only, mm -hmm. you know, a half a block away. Mm -hmm. So we're hoping, A, to just to get people down there in general. And hopefully maybe if it's a bit more attractive, maybe we can get some more folks to park there. I agreed. And I think four or five spots are totally worth it. And my other question was about store management, since uh, I'm probably the person who knows the least about um, species and trees. But it seems to me, um, Commission, that we have an opportunity to, um, you know, pick some trees that will be the best for store management. We've been talking about this a lot over the last couple of years. So John or Matt or Eileen, any of anybody who are there, you know, we probably want to focus on the best kind of water absorbing yeah. um, trees. Yeah. So what I we have a do, suggestion. We could Go ahead, meet, Steve. I'm sorry. So if, you know, two or three members or, or however members of the committee wish to meet, we can, you know, meet virtually and, you know, I'll, I'll have, you know, I'll share the plans and I can zoom in on areas and we can hash out what you want and where, and then I can mark that plan up accordingly. Yeah, so I, I have a suggestion um, somewhat similar. I, I would say tonight, maybe we ask questions and kind of vet it, and then maybe we take this and we combine it with our fall tree planning, not to be planted just from a design perspective, because we have about 60 trees that we want to put downtown. So John Hostback and I are gonna meet Monday simply to walk around, confirm the locations and confirm whether it should be a small or a large tree. And then from there, we have to pick out what should those trees be. So um, I have an email into Jonathan Alderson, who of course, you know, helped us help the township out last year with the downtown trees to see would he wanna select the trees, uh, the new 60 trees. It's something we're gonna talk about later on tonight with the goals, but what we could do, we go, however we do those 60, we could encompass this area as well because it's all downtown. And this way it would all be complementary to whatever is there now versus what we're thinking for the future. Would that make sense? I think that's a great idea. I, I, I sort of feel, I'm just wondering, Eileen, if it would, this seems like a lot of area. I'm just wondering if that would take the bulk of your 60 trees. I mean, and maybe that's okay, but just pointing that out. So we wouldn't give up any of the 60 trees. It would basically be, this would go under the $3 million bond. This would get oh, approved okay. by the BOC and then plant it whenever the time is right. But from a design, design perspective, we would do it all now. Okay, gotcha. Even though it'd be planted in different phases. Yeah, in different funds. Okay. Yeah. I think that's a fantastic idea. idea. Eileen to coordinate the trees that are already being planted. Yeah. One thing to keep in mind is that the, the parking lot scenario is going to be vastly different from uh, any other street tree or resident scenario because of the stress uh, of lack of water, the, the heat, the compaction. So <clears throat> there's, there's a, uh, the tree list for this uh, can, can be very, very interesting and it should yeah. and sort of unique to this situation. So yeah. So the only restraints you have are where it's not green, you can't plant, and you've got to watch where the street lights are, the parking lot lights are. But other than that, it's pretty open for your, like I say, it's a blank canvas for you to paint. Right, but I, I do like the suggestions I've heard so far, just the idea of, hey, let's prioritize those that will help us with storm order, then you know, Matt's suggestion, let's prioritize those that would thrive in a parking lot versus, you know, a, a nice resident's backyard. <laughs> so, Jane, any how, thoughts from you? I'm oh, sorry. I was just going to oh, ask, how oh. does that play out, Steve, with the plan to bring it to commissioners? I think it's always good if State Tree has looked at things when, when they come, by the time they come to us. I think it's always, it's always helpful. I would request that Shade Tree have a plan in place by the September meeting that you can yeah. all see and vote on. And then I'll include that when we go to the commissioners. I think we can do that because we need to have a plan in place anyhow, just to support the fall planning. Sure. James, any thoughts? 
Yeah, it's just a, a couple things. One on subject, two off. Um, I'm not really familiar, Steve, with these these big stormwater projects, but um, the areas that are going to be green, are they going to be low areas? Do do we know what they're going to be like? Are they going to be above grade? Or is water going to be running across them? So picture a parking lot with curbs. So the curbs are six to eight inches high, uh -huh. and that's where the ground level is at that point. So these trees, the base of these trees is six to eight inches above the parking lot ground. Okay, so, so we're not expecting, oh, sorry. The, the entire area has curb around it. Okay, so we're not expecting these areas to be really wet or anything like that afterwards? I, I would think of just standard conditions, except when it floods. So this is a flood reduction project. It is not a project that will stop all flooding in Wayne. Okay. So it will reduce the probability of flooding, but the area does flood in, in really bad storms. You, you know, I mean, if you're familiar with it, we have pictures where probably a third of this lot was underwater at one point. Now that's not always the case. So yes, the trees will get wet at one point, but in general, in normal cases, it's just regular ground. And yeah. we have and that's only like two or three times a year or something. It, it'll, yeah. I hope not, but. Uh, <laughs> Less than that, I got gotcha. you. All right. Well, so don't forget now we have the opportunity with this bid project, we're gonna specify the trees, we're gonna specify the soil remediation, all that. So. Okay. That's all within our control. Gotcha. Yeah, if it was a really going to be a real wet area, it would just change the entire tree list. No, for 99% so. of the time, it is not. Okay, got it. You can see our guy he even proposed, uh, if I can read that, uh, an Acer. I can't, it's too small for me to read that, but it's a maple. So that's no special wet footed tree. That's, you know. Yeah, yeah. okay. And uh, the other thing, which is off subject, and forgive me for this, but um, the handicap parking is, um, I do see some spots. Is there any chance that they could be moved? So a lot of that handicap parking was put in with thought that people are gonna be going to the library, okay. right? Because that upper left-hand area is access to the library. Right. Um, we can I was just thinking- Why would subject, you want the move, James? Yeah. What's that? What, what would you want them moved? Well, I would keep those two spots. I, I wouldn't just go with ADA. I would go beyond that. And I would actually, in that middle lot where it runs out, you have a walkway to South Wayne Avenue. If you were to put one or two spots in there, you would give, it would give somebody the ability to get to South Wayne without going through a parking lot whether it's somebody in a wheelchair or somebody with uh, other disabilities, it would be very beneficial, I think, to people. Could you scroll down just a little bit, please, Ian? I can't remember if we have a spot down there. Okay, we do not. So uh, you can go back to where we were, sorry, Ian. Uh, so, sorry, Steve. <laughs> no, so at this point, we, we can do it depends on where they go, how many spaces we lose, because one handicap space is basically two parking spaces, right? So if you look up but in that I, corner, you see a handicap decal right. the area and that. So that's those three spaces become two. Um, so I, I can add that and I'd go back to the police and see, you know, get their blessing. I, I don't have a problem with that, but I don't know that this is the form for that, James. We can talk offline about yeah, that. Yeah, I got you. I just maybe it's want... just dispersing the three, so they're not all up in one area. Maybe you could yeah. take the one and move it yeah. to an area Wait. along South Wayne, just to disperse it. But I'll gladly talk yeah. with you, James, on this. We can go over this for sure. Thanks, Steve. Yeah, we could be the township of trees and accessibility, <laughs> right, Commissioner Borowski? <laughs> Super. Okay, Frank. Any questions? Okay, he looks good. <laughs> I get, I saw the thumbs up, so we're okay. Um, so, can we, um, okay, so, 
Eileen, we're, we'll e e we will email each of you mm -hmm. these, these slides okay. so you can look at them and review yep. them and come up with ideas for when you want to talk. Yep, that sounds perfect. Steve, are there any dimensions on any of the plants in terms of widths? Like, what is like, what's the width there between the the uh, various uh, parking areas? It, well, they see, look pretty I'm narrow. We, we don't want to make it that easy for you guys. You got to spin <laughs> it off, right? So we're not going to give you all those things. Okay. Um, you know, I had to go to school for this stuff, so I am not going to give away all my. <laughs> I'm sure there's a scale on here. <laughs> yes, there is, and so I can always add a few distances for you. To the dis Maybe like just... to... I'll add a few distances, so I'll do that. Is there and then... a scale on the plan? I mean, seriously, we could figure it out, but as long there as there is, there is a scale, and okay. if you go to the right size of the plan, the scale will work. Okay, thanks. So now, see, now you don't need me anymore, but that's okay. <laughs> okay. Folks, so anything else? If you guys need help with plant selection, yep. I'd, I'd be ha happy to help out. Yeah, no, that sounds good. And I think what I'll do anyhow via email is um, I'll wait to see what I find out next week. Once I meet with um, John and we walk down the trees, we'll know what that looks like talk to Jonathan Alderson, I'll let you know wh where we're netting out and certainly invite anyone um, to review the plans. Great. Sounds good. So maybe James and Matt. Okay, super. Um, so motion to, I, I, Steve, I don't really know if you need us to approve this other than because we're still going to come back and do the design. Correct. Okay, good. Okay, super. Hey, so folks, then we go to our last topic, which is under goals and is our fall planting. Okay, so Ginny, do you want to kick that off and then I can do the portion around what's going in the WBA and, and do the budget portion? Sure. We um, had um, the flyer, uh, I think, sent to all of you guys. Thanks for, to Frank for getting that out. And we also sent it to the BOC members for uh, them to include in their newsletters. Um, the other marketing that we've done is uh, our ad is running in the um, papers um, this coming week. And um, then it'll be running again the week after uh, Labor Day. Um, Frank and I need to put our heads together and decide when to run the banner ad, which is the digital ad. I sort of am thinking, you know, somewhere like maybe second week of September. So we have almost three weeks of, of advertising that way. Um, I also sent the uh, flyer out today to all of the folks that were on our email list from last um, oh, year. And, great. Um, we actually already have two people that signed up for trees. So that's wow. great. And um, I had a um, email from our, our former member. You all remember Joe uh, Garcia. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He says he knows several people that want to have uh, trees planted so great i think we're off to a really good start no, that sounds super um okay so then i'll i'll go to the budget i'm just going to share my screen ian i assume that's okay okay let me know when you can see this and if i need to make it larger Can you see this? Yep. Uh, it's it's an Excel spreadsheet. Okay. Yeah, it looks good. Okay, good. Okay, so this is what I did. And this is I, I need some input here. So the starting budget, I got this from Bill White. It's eighty four thousand. So that's how much we have to spend on the fall planting. So what I did is, we know last year each tree for the resident cost us five hundred and fifty dollars. I grossed it up a little bit to say six hundred. Okay, and then what I did is. That would be the resident trees, the WBA trees, the majority of them. But the key question is the WBA trees that went in last year, the 60, I think they are slightly larger. To me, they look almost the same size, but I remember hearing that. And my understanding is the price is 1000 or 1500 And Steve, I don't know if you were able to confirm the price. And if not, we can just go with the 1500 I'm showing here. John might be able to. For one tree? 
this was for the, the 60 that went in the township in the WBA last year. My understanding is we paid 50 per tree for our fall planting trees, but the township put in slightly larger trees and they were more expensive. But I, I don't have a price point for what that is. So I, I think you were checking. Uh, but are you saying $1,500 per tree? Correct. That seems very high, but okay. unless they were doing other work to prepare the site. I don't think so. If they're just planting those trees, which are probably three inch caliper, that's and, yeah. too much. So what do you think would be an appropriate number to use, James? If you were doing two, two to two and a half inch tree, um, you can go with that same, uh, you're looking at probably seven to nine hundred dollars. Uh, okay. But if you're doing, we need to take into consideration one thing. So if these trees are going where trees were previously, mm -hmm. right? Removing those stumps was uh, not a normal stump removal. If they're going where there was no tree and there's concrete removal, then I don't think you're far off with the fifteen hundred. Yeah. There's not concrete. There, there's no concrete being removed anywhere. So okay, all the, the, price, the price I gave Steve was for just planting. I said, were there any yeah. site uh, issues? And, yeah. and so if there's if there's just planting in bare ground, mm -hmm. I think you're fine with James's number. If they're going back in where a tree was in the sidewalk, mm -hmm. and that tree has to be removed, I would go with the 15. If it's just dropping. Hey, hey, Steve. Yes, John. With uh, what was the gentleman's name that did the job for us, the young gentleman? Gessler, was that the name? That's correct. Yeah, they were at $1,600 when you did their math, about $1,600 a tree. And that was not with any major concrete. That was like removing those bricks, removing a stump, new soil modification. It was like $1,600 a tree. So you're right on the money there. So we might want to. I don't think $1,500 is far off. Yeah, because this is a prevailing wage job. There's, I mean, I, I'd rather see you go in conservatively and do more. Yep. Yeah. So let's we, we can try it at at this price point right now. But let, I'll explain to you how this works. So, what I could have done is taken all sixty trees and said they're all going to be fifteen hundred dollars. But if we do that, then we have hardly any money to spend on the residence trees. Look like this. I don't, see, I don't see the ad budget in there either, Eileen. That's a separate budget because that's our communications budget, um, okay. Jenny. So that that we already have five thousand dollars set aside for that. Okay. Yep. So if we make that sixty, then you can see. Well, we're already over budget, ninety thousand. So that's where I started to play and said, okay, for these 60 trees, what if we break them up into 10? Those that are right downtown, those that are closest, and we put the rest of them equal to or so a resident tree. Now, you know, I which I think thought, I also thought we had 140 trees total that we were originally yeah, thinking. Correct. So if we did 140 trees by about 550, that's about um, seventy thousand dollars. So we could do that as well. We could say we don't want to put in any larger trees. We could make this number zero. So let me explain to you what I did here, and then we can determine how to, how we want to balance this. So right now, if we do ten trees, like ten that are actually closest to the downtown area, we say, hey, those are going to be the larger trees to keep it commensurate with what's already planted there that would come to $15,000. And then for all the other trees, whether it's a, a, a tree going somewhere, you know, in the downtown along Lancaster Avenue or in the Radnor Middle School, they would be the same, those that we plant for the residents. And they're about, I, instead of 550, I use 600 just to make sure we're safe. And then for the stump grinding, we do have 10 stumps that we need to grind. And they're not very large stumps. They're like six to eight inch stumps. And so I talked to James ahead of time and we thought $200 would probably cover that size stump. So if we go with this type of distribution, we would basically be at the $84,000 and that would allow us to plant 60 resident trees. 
So if we want more resident trees, we could take away a few larger WBA trees and, you know, vice versa. So I, I made this such that we could play with the numbers. But that's Eileen, generally for, how it works. For, for last fall, wasn't, or the last spring planting, I, I thought the, um, what is it, uh, all seasons? I thought yes. their bid when they came in was 475 per tree. And they did large, can half large canopy and half uh, ornamentals, and they were at 475 per tree. Okay, I thought it was 550. Um, so I don't know if it, I, and, and I don't, I don't remember. that maybe with the watering, et cetera. I thought it was kind of 550 per tree all in. And, and that, that's another point. So two things, just to warn you against. As a rule, I try not to use the low bid of a previous year as the budget estimate for a following year, because in a year, prices go up. You don't know if that contractor is going to bid it. You don't know if they're going to get it. And um, if we had talked about them maintaining the trees as in watering them, that that's part of the project. So all these things add up the bid bond, the prevailing wages, all the things we make them put in the project are gonna be reflected in the unit prices, right? They're covered somewhere. So you need to look at, like when we put this out to bid, the way I'm gonna have line items is X trees in the sidewalk, X trees on lawn, Wayne WBA, and the rest are gonna be all the ones that go to the residents. And you'll probably see different unit prices but if we want them to water them for a specific time, that's going to be factored in there somehow. And that's and your I think that was in last, yeah, I think that was in last year's contract. I thought it was five waterings. No, it, it was just, they filled the water bag and they were done in Wayne. They had to, the trees were inspected by Rockwell Urban Forestry. Tree bags were installed. They filled them once. And our public works guys have been doing it ever since. If you want to put that, they have to water them for five weeks, then we need to be specific because we, we, we're going to pay for that in some fashion, whether it's a line item or it's just included in every tree. So when All Seasons did the job last year for the uh, fall tree planting or spring tree planting, was that a prevailing wage job? That was. It was, okay. But the one <clears throat> that was done in Wayne was also a prevailing wage job. And like I say, because of the conditions, the prices are higher. So, so I understand. You, as you know, James, you're not just pulling up to a spot in Wayne and dropping a tree. They're going to factor in the fact that they got to deal with a little traffic or a car is in the way at a parking space or something like that. So I would expect some slightly higher unit prices for WBA trees. Not, not at the middle school where Eileen mentioned, mm -hmm. but in in the uh, commercial district proper. Yes, I, I understand. That's why w when I asked Eileen, are they ready to go? She said, yeah, there's no stumps or no concrete or anything. So that's why I said the price was what I did. Yeah. Um, and I, I really thought that the, I didn't, when I saw the bidding package for the fall tree planting, I didn't think it was a prevailing wage. I never said that. I know the WBA project was, but my, my point is, if you do it two separate uh, jobs mm -hmm. without the prevailing wage, you might be able to get it so down we, to that 475 like it was before. That's we, all. We and plant more trees. I mean, so we can't do that. So first off, you're, you are correct, James. Last year was not prevailing wage because it was under 25,000. There was one year that we actually went out to bid that was a prevailing wage project. It might have predated some of you folks. No. But no, last year we went out to bid, Steve. No, I mean it was above twenty-five thousand. So that was prevailing wages then. That's always okay. the case. So, so if it's a competitive bid, it has to be prevailing wages. Is that how it works? So if the bid's gonna come in at over twenty-five thousand dollars, it will be. So we okay. know this is a bigger than a twenty-five thousand dollar project. So I'll I'll provide prevailing wage rates with the bid package. 
So, Steve, on the question of whether or not the, account, the uh, bid should re include watering or not, I mean, how much can we really save if they don't do the watering? I, I have no idea what something like that would cost. I, I really, I don't know how to even price that. I do have concerns. So our public works guys are watering 60 trees this year. John, will that be over with next year or will they have to still do that? Um, I'm planning for it to be over. However, if we get some really, really hot, dry periods, there's a good chance I might uh, call Rick to come out and do some water, obviously. But I'm hoping we do not have to uh, proceed with the watering. So then these trees could replace the trees Public Works is watering. And I don't mean to speak for Steve McNellis because he's our Public Works director. But I'm thinking if they can take care of the 60 trees in Wayne, maybe they can take care of watering the, they're not gonna water the resident trees, but somebody's gotta water mm -hmm. these trees in the commercial area because the restaurant owners and those, those folks aren't gonna do it. Okay. So, so I, I believe Steve, um, all seasons who had the contract last year, he automatically includes five to six waterings, just part of his process, his protocol right. with his planting, um, which is great for the, you know, the fall startup, but that will not, um, you know, include the, uh, preceding year. I, I you, you were all garbled, John. I lost you in the beginning. Can yeah, so me? Steve, John, yeah, so John was basically saying what I had recalled that the 2019 fall tree planting, all seasons included five waterings. If that's the case, and that's, so I don't recall that, but that, if that's the case, and if they did that, that's fantastic. So if that's the way you want to go again, I mean, that's, we'll put it in there. They, Steve, they, they did it on I their would, own. It was not. Out well. It, it was not. It was not part of the bid, Steve. It was something they did on their own. Thank you. Yeah, I, I don't remember. I don't recall that being written into the bid. Yep. So, Trish, our Ob Wan, uh, sent me the the bid from the Gessler process. So, on average. I'm just looking through here. And is the Gessler the residential trees or the no, WBA they the trees? They did, they did Wayne. And John's right, they were about $1,500 a tree in Wayne. Which included the stump grinding or the prep? Yes. Well, Again, I, I'll work with Eileen offline on this. So I'm gonna get the big Google Earth map that shows the locations for planning to include in the bid package. And I'm gonna break this down as trees planted in sidewalk. You know, we'll show where the stumps are. Trees planted in the grass, yeah. like over at Radnor Middle School, really that's not an issue. Um, and we'll, we'll put it out there like that because you don't wanna homogenize this whole thing or you're going to pay more for the trees that are easier to plant. So we want to be specific mm -hmm. as to how many of each type of each location they're doing. Mm -hmm. I mean, and there's only 10 stumps. It's not, it's not the end of the world. No. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I guess we can figure out the finer points offline, but what do you think about the distribution? That's, it's really this column B that we have to, that would be good to align on tonight if we can. The stump grinding, that, that has to stay as is. Can't do anything about that. But the other three are up for grabs. And I guess I would say the resident trees um, stay as is. It's just, do we want to increase this number or decrease it? And then the same, I'd say line four and line seven are the ones we want to talk about. Eileen, we may be solving for the resident trees because don't we have uh, uh, commitments or confirmations on the WBA trees? Uh, people have we have, yeah, no, it's not. 
we're not concerned about um, the locations or people signing up. It's all assuming that we're going to have enough people to sign up and we already have locations for these 60 trees. It's really the distribution. Do we want all 60 to be the smaller size, $600? Do we want all 60 to be the larger size, $1,500? Or do we want some type of 10, 50, 25, 25? I mean, I think the sizing really depends on where they're going to go. Mm -hmm. So I think it's hard to say from, from just looking at, you know, a spreadsheet, how we divvy up the uh, WBA trees, because I think it's really important to take into consideration where they're going to go, whether it should be a, a big tree would be more appropriate or a small tree could go there. Yeah, I mean, either way, like in a couple of years, we won't know the difference because, you know, basically they'll grow. So it's all... Um, it's not large or small, meaning large canopy or small flowering. No, it's it's just, oh, okay. no. So get a whole separate type of tree for those guys. No, you're not following. The no, let me, let me, yeah, maybe I'm not explaining this clearly. So the 60 trees that were planted in the WBA last year were $1,500 a piece. The approximately 70 trees that we planted in the fall tree planting were around $500 per piece. So a big price difference. My understanding is the ones that we planted were a little bit smaller in size versus those that you see when you walk down North Wayne or on Lancaster Avenue. So this year we are targeting about 140. We can't afford 140 trees at $1,500. So it's just those that are going near the WBA, meaning like those that would get planted near the library on West Wayne Avenue, those that would go in the hoteling building um, on South Wayne, those that will go um, in North Wayne between Weikert and Dr. Ritz, like where they have the white tent set up right now. Right. So do we want those to be larger trees? If so, we could like ring fence um, the 10 trees that are closest, let's say, to that downtown North Wayne, Lancaster Avenue crosswalk and put those 10 there. And then as we go further out Lancaster Avenue, let's say down near um, the church, St. Catharines, um, as we go to TD Bank, as we go to those places further down along Lancaster Avenue, would we put in the same trees that we're giving to residents, which are, you know, still a very nice sized tree. I guess where I'm getting so, confused um, is the residents are getting an option of a flowering versus a shade tree. So right. you're, you're saying that yours for the WBA will all be shade tree ones. No, they too will have the option. When John Hosback and I do the walk down, not every location will be appropriate for a large canopy tree. There may be some locations where we say, hey, this has to be a small flowering tree. But on average, even when we did our trees, whether it was small or large, the average cost by my memory was 550, so I just rounded up to 600. So that's where that's I, I where the question isn't large canopy or small flowering. The question is larger caliper size tree, like the diameter of the of the tree. Oh, okay. Versus that, that that that's the question. I think that we should uh, account for and budget for a few larger ones in the WBA. And I'm not so sure, Eileen, there is a big difference because of the different species. Okay. Like I'm thinking of the one in front of Christopher's, which is a flowering tree. Uh, I'm sure it didn't cost that much, the 1500 And it's, it wasn't a large canopy tree. But I think we should allow for some of that. And some of the neighborhood trees, there's one at the end of the street of, um, on Bloomingdale and Lenore, which was a large, it wasn't a flowering tree, it was a canopy tree, which was one of the residential ones that Joe Garzio had got put in in Lombardi's yard lot. So I think that if we make an adjustment to the budget for it, that we can work with that, mm -hmm. you know, like a, say 15 trees. Okay, so let's say, let's just say we do something like that. Let's say we do 15, um, then we would put this at, and we do about 50 resident trees, 45. Eileen. So that, that's how it works. Yeah. Uh, so I, I, I'm not 100% sure, but I know with the fall tree planting, I think we did two, and, two to two and a half inch caliper trees. And I believe that it was the same caliper for the WBA project. The reason why the trees are $1,500 is because there's more work 
involved in getting them in the ground, whether it be mm -hmm. taking a concrete block out or taking out a root that was already there or, mm. um, or bricks like uh, John had said earlier. Okay. Um, but they're okay. all the same size. The two and a half inch caliper for both projects, the same size tree. Um, they're possibly a three inch caliper, but from what I remember, it was two and a half inch caliper. Uh, with the fall tree planting that we did, we also included the ornamental trees, which tend to be, I'm not sure if we class them as two and a half inch trees, but they are a little bit smaller usually than the large canopy trees um, in height. So the 15 WBA trees that are $1,500, they're the same size tree, two and a half inch caliper. There was just more work involved to get it in the ground. Okay, and in this case, I don't think in most locations, when John and I walk it down, we can note it. I don't think that's going to be the case. There's no removal of concrete in any of these locations that we've selected. Right, I understand that. That's why yeah. I said the price, I think, would be lower. But it might be a little bit higher because it is prevailing wage, and we are in a time where every landscape company or construction company is busy, so they're jacking up prices anyway. So you might be good with $1,500, uh, like Steve and John said, but they're the same size trees, yep. the two and a half inch caliper. And okay. uh, I'm sure Steve or Trish could even look it up and uh, it's on the contract, whether it's two and a half or three inch caliper there. We okay. planted two and a half in the fall. I believe the WBA was two and a half as well. The uh, There's outside Christopher's, the uh, uh, or up that Wayne Street is the Proteas, which are a little bit smaller than say uh, the oak trees that were planted, but they're the same caliper, uh, yep. two to two and a half or possibly three inch caliper. I would stick with the two to two and a half inch caliper um, for all those areas, whether it be residential or in the WBA, unless John would think that we should go bigger, but I think two and a, Two to two and a half, you're going to get a 10 to 12, 10 to 14 foot tree, depending on the nursery. So it's going to be a nice size tree. Okay, so I think we're good there. Then what we could do is we could bring the price point down from 1500 to 1000 assuming we're not going to have the same prep work that existed last year in the WBA, but we could put it at 1000 higher than 600 for what? the majority of the resident trees would cost. Um, and we could assume something like, I'm gonna bring this down, that 10 of them would cost a little bit more. Maybe we do it that way. Um, and that would give us 60 resident trees and that would give us $6,000 of contingency. Does that sound okay? So what would happen if we went to 70 residence trees? Can you plug that in just as a what sure. if? Sure. Flat, even, Frank. Well done. <laughs> Not a dollar left over. <laughs> You're like a small town banker, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> uh. So I guess this is another way of saying if we did have um, uh, 60 trees for the residents and we did have the money left over we could put 10 more into the residential areas of Wayne. Yeah and maybe what we do is we we go with this and then uh, okay. John if you're still on the line when we do the walk down okay. on Monday we can which trees would require more prep work and then we could finalize this number. So we, yeah we can, we can do a check off Eileen we can yeah. look at the ones that are going to need you know some modifications soil modifications versus just clean easy excavation plant restore. Mm -hmm. That would be yep. helpful. Yeah. Okay. Looks good. Great. Okay, good. I think I think we're good then. Can I just ask one small favor, Frank and Ginny? Do you guys have a JPEG of that flyer that you sent out today um, instead of a PDF? Um, I I don't, and I don't know how to convert it. But maybe do you, okay. Frank? Yeah, I, I can give it a try. It's going to cost you, Lisa. But <laughs> <laughs> it's just that when you're posting on Facebook and um, when I put it in my commission newsletter, <clears throat> if it's a JPEG, it's a lot easier to get it in there. And for no, I bet Molly could convert it to JPEG because she's putting it on our Facebook page, you know, the township Facebook page. 
and and uh, the website. So maybe she has a JPEG of it, or if Frank can't do it. Yeah, yeah. Let me let me give it a quick try. Then I'll just reach out to Molly first thing tomorrow morning. Okay, okay that'd, that'd be Frank, great. Can you send Thank that you. to all of us? Yeah, I'll yeah, send that would be super. To, uh, both commissions, okay. the, the BOC okay. and the SDC. James, are you still going to put um, the flyer on your Garrett Hill Facebook page too? I already did. Um, I, I reached, I posted something, but if you, um, I'll figure something out to put the flyer on the Facebook page. Yeah, that would be good if you could. And uh, I did, uh, I th think I included you. I emailed um, the commissioner in that area and he said he'll put it on his Facebook page. But I think you guys are already doing that? You're gonna send him something? I, um, well, I know, Frank, you sent him a copy of the flyer uh, so that they could use it for their newsletters. Yeah, for or Facebook and our, news, and our newsletters, having a JPEG is gonna be a lot, it'll be a lot easier. Facebook won't take a PDF, it will only take a JPEG. Okay. I just put the link up, but to the site, but it would be cool to have the flyer. Okay. Or a PNG, either one. It will take either one. Eileen, could you send us a copy of the budget too? I just it'd be helpful for reference. For yeah, sure. Next year's yep. fall planting. Yep, no problem. Um, okay, any other questions about the fall planting? Anything else we need to do? Okay, good. So, hopping have, back. So, Go ahead. Eileen, I don't, it, this has nothing to do with the fall planting, but um this is about the bare root mailing that frank um put the letter together um i'm going to be my goal is to get that out by friday um i haven't talked to steve and steve's now offline so i but i think that the best way to do this is to have steve sign the letter that it come from staff um it, yeah, that's, that's your call right. it's your call um but i think that that's probably number one he's there he can sign it and then i can you know just go from there i have a you know his signature i can just stick right on the the letter uh as opposed to frank having to come in and sign all the letters yep that sounds great okay frank you're on mute so I said that's perfect. Okay. Okay. And then once I get them done, I'll just, you know, I'll let you guys know that it's done. Thank you. Okay, super. Okay, so then for the agenda, we're at 10 and 11, which are simply the hazardous trees that were removed and 11 the trees removed by the township. So you can see we have um, a lot of heritage trees. So I assume in, I did not look, but I know Trisha's always good at putting the hazardous tree report right in our meeting notes. So are there any questions about number 10, the hazardous trees that were removed by residents? I just had an observation that uh, two of those trees are already gone, you know, at the um, Keystone Landscaping and Wolf Trap or whatever that, that, that place was, Wolf Watch. Um, so I'm, I was just, I, I was talking to Matt about this. I, I don't know what the process is, but people are removing trees before their application was approved. I mean, that's not true. No. So the process is they submit um, a hazardous tree report. The hazardous tree report has to come from a certified arborist. So they submit that, that report to me and then it goes to John. John then reviews it. We, we, um, respond to them within 48 to 72 hours because if it is a serious hazardous tree we can't take that responsibility of god forbid something happens so that is why you know that it's done previously but it's on the agenda to show you guys these are the reports that came in these are the re this is what john has reviewed John is the one that says, yes, it's good to go. No, it's not good to go. And then- So, so for, exa for example, Frank, um, I reviewed two of them today and one of them was approved. 
So those trees might be removed Monday. We're not gonna meet again until September. Those trees will be gone when you get the memo. Okay, I just needed to understand the process, that's yeah. fine. Yeah. yeah, no, and I should have clarified that. Really, number 10 and 11 are just for information. Correct. We, we, don't, improve, we don't approve those, we're just informed. Okay. So and any all, uh, I was just gonna say, and also the, um, if a tree is in bad shape, like during a storm or something, somebody can take it down at that time without doing a hazard report. Mm -hmm. They just have to send one in, I think within 10 or 15 days, Trish, Correct. something like that. Correct. Yeah. So they might be taken down before a hazard report if there's imminent danger. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it makes sense, makes sense. Okay. Thank you. Good, okay. Anything, anything else? That brings us to the end of the agenda. Just one thing, but we can do a next uh, meeting. The, I talked to you about the invasive uh, trees, possibly for not needing. Oh, correct. You wanted um, to modify the ordinance. Yeah, but let's, I think we should talk about that later since it's getting so late. Yeah, I, and you know what? I also would like it, you know, to be on the agenda. Um, you know, we had already posted the agenda. And I think that, you know, if you if you guys need something or want something on the agenda, I I need it a, at least one week or earlier than because I have to post the agenda and I it's yeah no that's fair Trish that, that and this way we make it publicly folks publicly aware this is what we're going to talk about so right. if folks want to have a say they can but i do think at some point and i know it's been a busy year and with covid so it may have to be next year is to update the ordinance overall so it would be like things that james um, is talking about also around the grading permits you know we've talked about hey is the cubic yardage too low or you know should those really come before us to approve and i'm i'm sure there's probably a few other things that, that we should look at in regards to updating and we did update the ordinance for the ash trees. So there's four species of ash that are under our general rules and regs that are exempted from shade tree worry. And so yeah. what James is saying is add maybe we add Elianthus. Yep. And, and maybe there's a way, like the way we have the recommended tree list, Matt, I believe that we can update that's an addendum. Maybe there's a way we can do that, like with invasive yeah. species. Great idea. You know, make it we can. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Good idea. Okay. Okay, super. Um, Matt, good luck on your operation, buddy. Thank you very much. You're having an good operation, luck, Matt? Matt? I'm getting my other hip done, so I'll be Oh, bionic. that's big. Yeah. Woo! That's very good. Yeah. God bless the, the, the township's so paying for it, so we can get them back out looking at more trees. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get the ten seconds in the hundred again. I'm trying to. I'm starting to wonder, did we cause this? <laughs> no, no, not you guys. You're not heavy lifting. <laughs> so okay anything else anybody wants to mention before they go claire is in the dark there it's time to go lisa's moved in i'm so envious she's got on some type of sweater or wherever you, it must be cool where you are she looks like she's down the beach I, exactly i am down the shore oh, I'm down the shore <laughs> good for you that's the way to do it okay. i like these zoom meetings i like it. i do too i do too mm -hmm. okay hey well great everybody um have a nice week and I'll be in touch after John and I do our walk down on Monday and whatever comes next week regarding the whole tree planting. Okay. Thanks, Good. Thanks everybody. Thank you so much. Okay. Bye, See you. Bye, Bye. guys.